welcome to another edition in the Precision Laser and Instrument YouTube series. My name is Anthony Pascuzzi. I am the Geospatial Training and Support Coordinator for uh, Precision Laser and Instruments. And today we're going to be going over um, the uh, cleaning up of SX10 uh, point cloud information inside of Trimble Business Center. Um, to start off, we're just going to go ahead and create a new project and uh, click US Survey Fleet. And we see down here we have our folder with our job file. Now the most important thing whenever it comes to uh, working with SX10 data, and it's a call I get quite often, is people will drag in the job file and they go, hey, my point clouds didn't show up or my images didn't show up or I'm getting an error. A lot of that has to do with the fact that they end up moving the files folder to one directory and the job file in another directory. These two have got to remain in the same directory. If you want all of your images and raw point cloud information someplace else on your server, that's all well and good. Make a copy of it and put it over there, but you need to make sure that job file and that files folder are in the exact same directory. So what we're going to do is drag and drop the, the job file into here. I don't have to worry about the files folder because it's automatically going to locate it. And we'll say OK. And that uh, scale factor 1 is basically telling me that this project is not state plane. It is just running in scale factor of 1. And right now it is actually colorizing the point cloud using the images. Uh, you can stop and colorize later. I'm just going to let mine finish. All right, so right now we're looking at our point cloud in a plan view. Um, so obviously we can't orbit around this and we're just looking straight top down at our, at our project. Um, under the home tab here, we have the option to go into a 3D view as well as up here in the, uh, the quick toolbar at the top, we can go into a 3D view there. So I'm going to open up a 3D view, zoom in, and you see the grid is now missing, showing me that we are in a 3D view. And I can hold the middle mouse wheel, and that will allow me to orbit around the point cloud. Now this point cloud has a lot of different features in it. We have uh, buildings, we have trees, we have poles, we have the street, the parking lot. We have a lot of information here. So what we can do to quickly clean this up is we can click on the point cloud in general, which uh, it'll highlight orange, and we'll go under our point clouds command, and we have what's called classify regions. Now what classify regions does is it tries to break, tries to break the point cloud up into uh, these five regions, and uh, they're listed over here. Now this will also have a sixth region, which is the default region. So in our uh, filter manager, and we scroll down to our uh, point cloud regions, default is the one that already exists. That's where all the things that cannot classify will remain. So the default region will more or less turn into a trash region by the end of this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on, click on the extract and let it do its thing automatically. Okay, so the classification, uh, the automatic classification has happened, and we can see here that our uh, ground is brown, the trees are green, the buildings are blue, um, the poles are red, and the electrical lines are all yellow. Now the other thing that you'll probably notice is the fact that not everything that was classified is correct, and it did not classify everything. I think that this tool is absolutely wonderful. Um, but it's about 80% 80, 80 accurate. So there is still some manual classification that you're going to have to do. Now, granted, I would rather do 20% of the classification than 100% of the classification, but uh, this is not the, uh, the um, end-all, be-all whenever it comes to classifying uh, your, your point cloud. So right now, if I go ahead and I turn off the default region, which again, like I said, is going to be your trash region, we can turn that off. And you can see we're left with a pretty cleaned up point cloud. So, with that being said, under your point clouds tab, you have an entire section dedicated strictly to regions. So we have create regions, we have add to regions, we have merge regions, we also have this keep in and keep out, and we also have sampling. Okay. So what create regions does is exactly what it seems like. 
you're going to create a custom region. Buildings, grounds, high vegetation, poles, the size of power lines are all well and good, but that does not take into account everything that you may run into or everything that you're going to be scanning. Uh, the add to region is whenever something makes a mistake and you want it to be put into a particular region or if you're trying to classify things out and you're slowly cleaning things up, um, you can either merge two regions together or you can add particular points from a point cloud into a region. So we're going to go over the create region and also the keep in and keep out. A uh, good place to do that is there's a part of this point cloud right here where we can actually see the roof line of a shed or a house or something uh, right here that's got underneath these trees. Now the reason why I thought it was part of the vegetation was because it's so close to the vegetation that it was touching it so then it kind of lumped everything all together made kind of a, a, a generalization. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off all my other regions so that I don't accidentally get those. And let's say that I wanted a, a region specifically for sheds. Will that ever happen? Probably not, but we're gonna do that for, uh, for demonstration purposes here in this particular moment. So what I can do here is uh, make sure that my selection, which right now is in rectangle select, is in polygon select. Rectangle select allows you to, to drag, and, uh, drag and create a rectangle. Doesn't do a whole hell of a lot of good with point clouds. Um, so I tend to use the polygon select for that. And I can just take a real big generalization or a real big stroke of uh, grabbing out just this piece of shed just by clicking and creating a box. Double click when I'm done and you see I have this now selected and I can tell this to keep in. I want to keep this in my selection so I can say keep in. And now the only thing that's going to show is strictly that one small piece. Now I can kind of orbit around it. And I can kind of see my roof line and see some of these points up here at the top. Another little trick is under your uh, rendering, you have the option here to change the point size. So if you have a hard time seeing that, you can change them to large or extra large. Um, however, you can end up seeing the points within that point cloud. You can just click on it and it will change. So I'm going to drag, come over here, come to that roof line. click and what I can do now is tell this particular section because I don't want this to be a part of my shed I can say keep that out now I can rotate the other way you can see there's a little bit more points up here they're not part of my shed so I'm going to tell that to keep out and slowly work around that particular object until we get rid of everything that is not shed All right, oh, a little bit more over here. All right, so this is our shed, and I want to put this in my shed region. Right now, it's still in high vegetation. I've just managed to clip it out from all the stuff around it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the entire thing. And instead of going to these keep ins or keeps out, I'm going to say create a region. And I'm going to call this region, you guessed it, the shed region. Say OK. Now everything is going to come back. And you can see now my shed is a different color than the high vegetation around it. I have successfully created a shed region as being showed over here in my point cloud regions. So that's using a combination of creating a region, keep in, keep out. Now we're going to go to this add to region. So add to region is let's say for instance, let's turn on our poles and signs and power lines. So right here, this red power line section, sh it should not be a part of the poles section. It should be part of the power line. So what I can do here is I can select this section. And since all of this is being part of the power line anyway, I'm not gonna make any mistakes, mistakes by overshooting the, the line a little bit. You see, I have all that set to orange. I can say add to region, and I can drop this thing down and say, I'm going to send that to power lines. Click add, close, and there it is. It's now part of the power line region. 
Same thing here. I have these green ones down here that got sucked into the uh, vegetation, but they're actually part of the power line. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those, and I'm going to say add to region. Now, let's say you had your power lines turned off and you didn't think about it, so you said create a region, and you just call it, you know, PL for power line, or, uh, you know, you call it power. So you can say okay. All right. So now we've created a region called power. And then you realize, oh, there was a region for that already. It's called power lines. So in our project explorer, I can go to my point cloud regions, hold down my control, hit power, and hit power lines, and I can merge those two regions together, and I can just call this power lines. So now that's my power line region. Now you can see it did change color to, I don't even know what color that is. Um, but I can click on that particular region, right click on it here in my Project Explorer, go to Properties, and change it back to yellow. Now, the last thing inside of these regions are these options here for sampling, which you have sample region and uh, sample by intensity. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and turn off these regions here, and I'm going to turn on the ground region. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this section of parking lot. Let's say this was my, my area of interest topo that I wanted to generate a surface of. So I go ahead and double click on that, have that point cloud selected, and I can say let's go ahead and create a region, and I can call this my parking lot topo. Say OK. Turn off my ground, that leaves me with my parking lot here. So I would not want to generate a surface off of points that are this close together. Uh, the triangles, it would just take a very long time for that to happen. So what I like to do is click on my point cloud and I'm gonna come to sample region. Now under sampling region, we have two different options. We have spatial sampling and we have random sampling. Random sampling is uh, how many points do you want in millions. Spatial sampling is what is the distance you want between those particular points. I tend to lean towards spatial sampling than random sampling. I think that random sampling would be okay if you were trying to extract or export a point cloud of an exactly a, a number of points. Uh, but for topo like this, I think spatial sampling is a little bit better. So I'm going to tell it that I want to uh, do a spatial sampling of point every foot. Now, if you are working in US survey feed or if you're working in metric or whatnot, uh, you can type any one of those units inside of here. So if a customer asks for, you know, uh, two meter spacing or uh, 10 centimeter spacing or eight inch spacing, you can type any one of those units inside of here. So if I say I want eight inch spacing, I can hit tab and it's gonna automatically convert it over to the proper spacing. So I'm gonna put in uh, one foot and I'm going to store that. I'm just going to go ahead and sample that point cloud region down. And now you can see here, now I have a point every foot. Okay, so that explains the sample region. Now sampling by intensity is a whole different animal. Sampling by intensity, instead of only working with uh, either uh, relative space between or uh, how many points, this is, this is filtering out the points based upon their intensity values. So if you're familiar with either taking a direct reflect measurement or scanning at all, everything has a different intensity value based upon the return of the scanner hitting that object and it coming back. So ob objects that are white are gonna have a real high intensity, objects that are black are gonna have a real low intensity. Um, the only time I've ever really messed around with this was whenever I'm dealing with cleaning up a point cloud and I cannot, I, I'm trying to filter out some information so I tend to just to slide these things, you know, slide these things over. Now, one thing I, I notice on everybody else's machine but mine is that everybody has numerical values here. Mine, for some reason, never seems to show those that show those numbers. Um, but to kind of show you what you'll look at whenever you see this stuff, if I turn on my buildings region and I click on that particular point cloud region, I can increase the low number and it's going to start clipping out uh, points that are that have low intensity value. 
or I can drop down the high intensity value and I can start getting rid of points that have high. So it's just another way of filtering out information. Move, move these things around, whatever's red is gonna go away, um, you know, whatever's orange is going to stay. Uh, it, it's another way just to filter out some point cloud data. Um, so that is it, quick tutorial on cleaning up point cloud information. Um, we have a lot more to cover whenever it comes to the SX10, uh, different views, limit boxes, uh, generating surfaces, and uh, several other things, mainly uh, a lot of deliverables. And another thing about point cloud registration or best practices when it comes to using the SX10 in the field. Um, but this is a, a very good subject to kind of go over once you have the data, because the SX10 is a very intuitive uh, piece of equipment to use. If you've ever run a robotic total station, you can absolutely can run an SX10 and come out with great results. Um, after you master the ability to clean up the point cloud information. That's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, and also if you have any ideas for future videos or things you would like to see uh, that you would like to see covered, um, you know, I'd be more than happy to record that for you. Have a good week and uh, we'll see you soon.